Hey everyone, it's Ashley with Evans Behavioral Services. Uh, today we are going to discuss the BCBA eligibility criteria that recently changed as of January 2022. Um, so the Additional changes are going to be coming um, in 2026 that we'll touch on briefly as well, um, but we'll review all of the current uh, requirements to become a BCBA, um, what the available pathways are to becoming a BCBA, um, and such. So there are four eligibility, eligibility pathways. Um, so um, as of 2026, there will only be two. So that is one change that will be coming up in a few years. Um, but as of now, the first uh, eligibility pathway that's pretty common um, is obtaining a master's degree or higher from an ABAI accredited or ABAI recognized behavior analysis degree program. Um, the second uh, pathway is also pretty common. Uh, so a graduate degree um, plus uh, a behavior analytic course sequence. Um, the third is a graduate degree plus faculty teaching and research. And then fourth is a doctoral degree plus postdoctoral experience within the field of ABA. Um, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into all of those as well. Um, so the first pathway. Um, so master's degree or higher from an ABAI accredited or ABAI recognized behavior analysis degree program. Um, and then the uh, another um, change is that your degree must have been obtained in 2015 or later. So if you did get a master's degree um, in behavior analysis prior to 2015, uh, that would not qualify with uh, the current uh, requirements. Um, so in addition to that master's degree, you are going to need uh, some field work hours. So there are two pathways within um, the supervised field work. So you could uh, accrue 2000 hours, 5% of which need to be supervised, or if you want the concentrated supervised field work, you have to accrue less hours, but more of your hours have to be supervised. So um, that would be 1,500 hours total with 10% of the hours supervised. Um, pathway two is that master's degree or higher from a qualifying institution. Um, so in this, um, pathway, your master's degree would be um, not in behavior analysis. Um, so it might be like general psychology or um, sociology or uh, a related field. Um, so then on top of that, then you would uh, need some behavior analytic coursework um, at a master's degree or above. Um, in total, uh, you would need su to successfully complete 315 hours um, and successful, they define as a C or higher in each class. Um, and then the same thing goes for the field work hours. So either 2000 hours with 5% supervised or 1500 hours with 10% supervised. Okay, pathway three. So like I mentioned, um, come 2026, pathways three and four will no longer be um, eligibility pathways for becoming a BCBA. So you would need to be doing one, either the pathway one or two. Um, but we will touch on uh, this pathway as well. So you will need a master's degree or above from a qualifying institution, um, at least three years of cumulative full-time work as a faculty member at a qualifying institution. Um, there are more specifics regarding like what um, coursework and things like that um, you need to have taught during that period of time. Um, but I, you can see the, the BCBA handbook for, for those. Um, you must have published one journal article in behavior analysis. And again, there's some additional qualifications that you'll want to check out if this is a pathway that you are um, pursuing. And then the, the field work hours are the same as pathways one and two with 2,000 hours, 5% supervised, or 1,500 with 10% supervised. And pathway four, the postdoctoral experience. So I think this is probably um, one of the, the least or is the, the least um, used pathway. Um, so with this one, you'll need a doctoral degree from a qualifying institution, postdoctoral experience um, for at least 10 years full-time um, qualifying experience practicing behavior analysis. Um, your experience would need to have occurred under a relevant state license or a national credential. And then your field work hours, since you would have so much experience at that point, um, 
are less than, than the other pathways. So um, you would need 500 hours of field work and 5% of those would need to be supervised. Um, so with, well, we have about three and a half years uh, until the 2026 changes um, take effect. Um, so pathway four at this point would not be enough time, of course, to um, if you were just starting out um, to accrue those 10 years of, of um, experience practicing in behavior analysis. Um, so pathway four, for anyone who is currently pursuing that, um, you are still able to until 2026. Okay, <clears throat> choosing a supervisor. Um, so there are qualifications that um, a potential supervisor would need to um, have. So an active BCBA without current disciplinary sanctions, um, you need to have been certified for at least one year and meet um, ongoing supervi supervision CEU requirements. Um, if you have not been certified for at least one year, um, then you, in order to be a supervisor, you would need to receive consultation on a monthly basis from a qualified consulting supervisor. Um, in addition, or other options, um, a licensed or registered psychologist certified by the American Board of Professional Psychology uh, in Behavioral and Cognitive Psychology, who was tested in Applied Behavior Analysis, or an authorized verified course sequence instructor. Okay, so choosing a supervisor. Um, so some, many employers do offer free supervision to um, like behavior technicians or RBTs. Um, there may come requirements with that. Um, of course, things like, uh, you know, you have to stay with the company for a certain amount of years or um, have to pay back a certain amount of money if you uh, leave the company before then. Um, so just make sure that you under fully understand those agreements, requirements of you um, that come along with that supervision that you're receiving. Um, but there are also external remote supervisors, things like that, that are available. Um, if you're not employed by a company with BCBAs available to supervise, or maybe your company doesn't have um, capacity for supervision, um, whatever the case, there are um, other options as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, not every supervisor is going to be a good match for each trainee. And I think that's totally okay. Everyone has, you know, different communication styles, learning styles, areas of expertise, um, different settings or um, populations that you've worked with as a supervisor that you, you know, a supervisee would be interested in. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to like shop around in finding the right supervisor for you. Um, it might not be the first one that you uh, start working with and that's okay too, um, to have more than one supervisor. <clears throat> All right, and then supervised field work. So um, you can start accruing your field work hours once you have attended at your first master's course. Um, so like your the very first uh, meeting of that course. After that, you can um, start as long as you also have <clears throat> secured a qualified supervisor and signed a contract um, with a supervising BCBA. Um, you can accrue between 20 to 130 experience hours each month. So with that, if you accrue less than 20 hours in a given month, you would not be able to count those hours at all. So if you had 19 hours that month, all 19 of those hours would be scrapped. Um, but you can accrue up to 130. So if you, um, any hours above 130 in the month, you would not be able to, um, to count. Um, and of course, anywhere within that range. Um, your hours do need to be completed within five years of the onset of supervision. So, you know, you really want to plan out in advance um, how many hours a month you want to accrue, um, you know, foresee any upcoming months that you're going to need to um, not be able to accrue hours or, you know, months that will be less and just, you know, plan out um, when you expect to be done with your hours. Um, that can help you to figure out how many hours you need to uh, accrue in a month and all of that. Um, you must be working with clients whom behavior analytic services are appropriate. 
And so, um, you know, a lot of times I hear like, oh, well, I'm not an RBT. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm not working with children with autism. Does that mean I can't um, get supervised field work hours and, and, you know, proceed toward becoming a BCBA? Um, but no, not, not at all. There's lots of different um, settings and population groups and such that you can um, work with as long as there is, you know, as long as you're meeting all of these requirements. So, um, and that you're, you know, the clients or patients or students that you're working with, um, that they're appropriate for behavior analytic services. Um, no more than 40% of your experience hours can be restricted. Um, so the, the reasoning for that is that when you finish your field of work hours, you wanna have the skills and expertise and competency in the job duties and knowledge expected of a BCBA. So if you're, if you're doing a ton of you know, direct hours or RBT um, type hours, working one-to-one -one with a client, um, you're probably not gonna be doing a ton of that when you become a BCBA. Uh, so while all of that experience is great, you know, you really want to um, build up your experience of working directly with or working um, in the capacity that a BCBA would be. So, you know, graphing, um, analyzing data, doing functional behavior assessments, doing uh, skill assessments, preference assessments, all of that kind of stuff uh, should be activities that you're doing during your supervised field work. Um, but you can uh, up to 40% can be restricted, so that direct work. Um, you wanna have multiple ex experiences working with um, different people, different population groups, as much as you know, you're able to, um, doing the following activities. So doing things like um, conducting assessments related to the need for behavioral intervention, designing, implementing, monitoring, um, behavior reduction programs, skill acquisition programs, writing those treatment plans, progress summaries, clinical notes, transition summaries, um, you know, even just emails, having experience with uh, professional communication with like outside providers and things like that. Um, overseeing the implementation of behavior analytic program by others, so that supervision component, um, communicating and collaborating effectively with caregivers and other professionals and any other activities normally performed by a behavior analyst that are directly related to behavior analysis. All right, so we talked a little bit about um, restricted versus unrestricted, but again, uh, you can accrue no more than 40% of your total hours as restricted and unrestricted must be at least 60% of total hours. Um, restricted is directly providing that therapeutic and instructional procedures. Um, and then unrestricted is all of these kind of activities that are gonna be typically done by a BCBA. So just to kind of prepare you for that role really. Um, unacceptable activities. So things like attending meetings with little or no behavior analytic content, providing interventions not based in behavior analysis, um, non-behavioral administrative activities, uh, billing systems, crisis management, things like that, those kind of trainings. Um, any kind of diagnostic assessments or other non-behavioral assessments, paperwork, documentation, um, stuff like that. Attending professional conferences, workshops, or university courses, um, and like com completing homework assignments, reading things for, for school classes for, um, for like your master's degree. Um, and then the purpose of supervision. So it's really to build those competencies in behavior analysis. Um, so, you know, your supervision should consist of um, monitoring skills, your skills throughout the supervised field work, developing and communicating performance expectations, um, conducting behavioral skills training, observing uh, the trainee's performance with clients and delivering that feedback, modeling um, technical, professional, and ethical behavior, um, guiding the development of behavioral case conceptualization, problem solving, decision-making repertoires, uh, reviewing the trainee's written materials and providing uh, feedback on those, overseeing and evaluating the effects of the trainee's behavior analytic service delivery and eva evaluating the effects of supervision throughout supervised field work. Um, so there's 
a lot <laughs> that goes into supervision that will occur over those uh, 1500 or 2000 hours or 500 if you're going that um, pathway four. Um, but you know, good supervision really should prepare you um, adequately for becoming a BCBA um, in the near future. Um, okay, just a little breakdown here of the differences between the supervised field work and the concentrated supervised field work. Um, so in supervised field work, you are going to need 2000 total hours, 5% of those need to be supervised. Um, you need at least four contacts with a supervisor each month at least one observation with a client each month, and at least 50% of your hours must be individual. Um, so you can do group supervision, but at least 50% um, should be individual. Um, concentrated supervised field work. So again, this is um, the way that you can get your supervision done quicker. Um, so you'll only need 1500 hours, but you will need more supervision. So um, of course, that's something to keep in mind uh, if you're you know, not um, getting supervision through an employer, um, it, you know, to the out-of-pocket cost might be a little bit more. Um, but then if you are getting supervision through an employer, um, there might be um, an inability to, to have supervision at the 10% of hours. So um, depending on their capacity and such. Um, and then, so you will need also more contacts with your supervisor each month. So a minimum of six contacts instead of the four. Um, but again, one, at least one need to be with a client each month and at least 50% uh, of your hours must be individual. So the same thing um, as the supervised field work. All right, so once you finish your field work hours, then come the exciting process of applying to sit for the exam. Um, so of course you still have to get that exam passed before you can become a BCBA, um, but finishing your field work hours is a huge accomplish, uh, accomplishment. So of course, feel proud uh, every step of the way. Um, so you'll submit your application on your BACB portal, uh, pay that $245, which is what the, uh, the cost of the application currently is. You'll submit any required documentation, and then wait uh, for your application to be approved or denied. Um, so they do say wait up to 45 days, but uh, it can definitely take uh, shorter than that as well. Um, if approved, you're gonna get uh, an email that explains how to apply for the exam um, or uh, how to um, schedule the exam. Um, and then if you are denied, you'll receive any information about um, why you were denied and what the next uh, steps forward will be. Um, so then once you do get that approval, you can uh, follow the, the link um, through the email and uh, uh, register for an exam date. Um, so there is another fee, um, $125 is gonna go to Pearson to, to um, take that exam. Um, and then from there, you know, if you haven't already, uh, just start studying and get ready for this exam. Um, there, I will have uh, lots of more resources coming, uh, more videos with some um, uh, test prep and things like that. So, you know, let me know what you're looking for and what would help you uh, as you embark on this journey. Um, all right. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. So thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.